I need to worry some of this metal away so I can even get the boring bar in there to start the boring process. So I'm going to go in there with a half inch bit up to where you see that black line. This is a 60 degree countersink, not to be confused with an 82 degree. I wish I had a huge one. I could do the whole job with it. And I'm probably wasting my time here. I just wanted to show you what a 60 degree countersink looks like. I've got a boring bar in the Aloris compound set at 60 degrees. I know you can't see it. Let's take a look at what kind of boring bar I've got here. Uh, if I think of it later, I'll give you the number on it. But you need one that will fit into the cone, but yet not uh, interfere on the opposite side when we get down to the bottom of the taper. So it's kind of a fine line to cross a ride as uh, in order to, to make your taper. so many different ways of doing things in the machine shop and often uh, one of them might be easier but a lot of them will work. Now you cannot, I want to take the, the wall thickness of this uh, bell down to about 100 thousandths. You cannot use a regular micrometer. I don't know if you can tell there why what I'm talking about or not. You certainly can use this and it works fine but it's most awkward to use on the lathe. So what I prefer is my ball anvil micrometer and that is great for tubing of any kind and I want to take that to about again 100 thousandths. You see how nicely that works? More than likely you do not have one of these but everyone has one of these. Surely you have seen one of these ball attachments. Hey, let's leave Shirley out of this. But it simply attaches to the anvil of a micrometer, but you have to allow for the diameter of that, which in this case is 200 thousandths. But that turns any average micrometer into a ball anvil type of micrometer. Pretty neat, huh? Is everybody happy? Well, I'm getting close to my dimension here, and in fact is 118 thousandths. So I got about 18 thousandths to go. That's a very uncritical dimension. So I'm going to start feeding a little slower, slower, and uh, trying to get a little bit better finish in that. And the bell is ringing and causing chatter.
Okay, this is my last pass. Now, if you get chatter or ringing, vary the uh, spindle speed. It's very easy to do on a variable speed lathe, and uh, I had a little chatter and immediately went away when I slowed it down. So this is the final pass. I won't show all of it, but I'm, I've got about five thousandths to go. And I'm feeding very slowly with oil on it. Alright, I think I'm done. And I'm five thousandths over, but I'm quitting right there. Be sure and use your little flashlight to look in there as you are machining and a little brush to wipe the chips out of the way. Now I've got a horrendous burr right here which I'm going to knock off before I draw blood. I haven't drawn blood yet today. Hmm. Quite unusual. I've seen some versions of this where people take a uh, cut across the end of the bell. What I mean is a bit of a flat here, rather than coming to a sharp point. But you know that's your option. I'm gonna I'm gonna make it like this because uh, I'm done. Now I'm gonna try to polish that just a little bit in there with some emery cloth. It won't be easy. Just a little bit rough. And part of that is that I'm using an, uh, a uh, boring bar. The boring bar looks just a little bit dull. That's always problematic, but that's the only one I had that would suit the purpose. But be sure and use as large a diameter and as short. That is short and stout for this work. So it doesn't flex. There's always some flexing, no matter how much you plan. As promised, this is the boring bar that I use to bore the inside of the cone, the inside taper. This is the prototype. I'm still not done. And that's the number of it. Looks like B9M-6. It is carbide. And if I had it to do over, I would take it to the grinding wheel and take a little bit of this corner off, which tends to interfere with the opposite side as you get in there uh, deeper. You saw for a while I had a scratch uh, before I realized I was going in too deep and marring the far side. So I would grind just a little bit of that off. It is short and sturdy and that's what you need. But you may not have that. You might, well, you got to use whatever you got or whatever you can make up. Now this boring bar is the one that I'm going to use to go in here and true up the hole before I bore before I ream it where is it here? 3 sixteenths 3 eighths 3 eighths not 3 sixteenths okay and I, I as I said it's held very precariously but it did work and the reason that I had originally taken this down to less than two inches, because I started with two inch stock, I, I took some off so that this would have the reach that I needed to go all the way through. However, I'm trying to get by on the other one with having just a little bit larger diameter. We'll see how that works out. But the next step is for me to put this back in the lathe and to bore out this hole. Now I'm going to take off as little as possible just to get it to, to run true and then I will power ream it with well this isn't even the reamer I got a chucking reamer someplace here all right I'm going back to the lathe I want to take a moment to show you one other thing here before I get any farther and that's about the run out again and since now I am measuring it less approximately one inch here the, uh, the drill didn't have a chance to run out as much over that shorter distance. So now, in fact, I only have, I can shade that a little bit, a run out of 
what about eight, eight or nine thousandths. So the run out wasn't as bad as it seemed when I measured it farther outboard. Is that quite clear as mud? I am now going to bore the hole back into concent that is concentricity with this small boring bar and it's only going to take a few passes. Be sure and use a little uh, pen light to look in there and I'm using a relatively slow feed and uh, take off as little as possible so that the hole is trued up and then I can ream it. I only have about a sixty-fourth of an inch to play with. I took three passes with a little boring bar, light passes. Now the hole is concentric and I've measured it with a Sterrett small hole gauge and I have, boy everything around here is magnetized. It's uh, three sixty-seven so I have eight thousand stream which is just about right so now I'm going to fit up my uh, 3 8 reamer and just ream it out. It'll take it to size. It would be great if I had a floating reamer holder but I do not. A little bit of tap magic from uh, Kevin on there. That's how much I took off. You can see the chips. Just for the heck of it, and to proof the concentricity now, I took the liberty of putting a 3 8 hand reamer in there, and it's tight. And uh, we already know that the cone here is concentric, because I never did take it out of the lathe. But with a little indicator on, up against the shank of the reamer, and zeroed out, and to show you that the point is in contact, let me turn it over now, and it is really spot on. Couldn't be any, any better. So there's true concentricity and how to get it. I hope that that uh, explanation was, was thorough and I proved that it worked. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. Now think carefully before you remove your material, your, your project, from a chuck. But I believe I've done every operation that I want to do. If I want to put it back in for a little deburring or polishing, you know, that, that doesn't matter and it, it, that would work fine. But the machining itself is done. So out it comes and uh, let's go to the next step. All right, back at the bench now, and the next step, as far as I'm concerned, is to put this uh, set screw hole drilled and tapped, and that is to be, well, according to the drawing, I'm not sure, I don't have the drawing yet, but uh, I'm going to make it a half inch in from the end, which happens to be right on that second uh, ring. So, using my punch here, And that's ready to drill. 8.32, did I say that?
Boy, that's a handy little drill press vise to hold small work. I wonder where I got that. So I drilled it number 29 and I am ready to tap it 832 and uh, 832 set screw. Unbreakal, that was a brand that was so popular years ago. I used to get those from Couch and Heil. Don't break a tap or a drill off when you get near the end like this because it's a real heartbreaker. Take your time. Are we having fun yet? And the set screw. I'll take the burr off that just a little bit. There'll probably be a burr on the inside now, so run the hand reamer through there to clean it up. But make sure that the set screw isn't down such that it hits the reamer and dulls the reamer. <laughs> 